1994, Daimler Benz introduced the Neckar One, a Mercedes MB100 minivan powered entirely by fuel cells with a power of 41 horsepower. The only problem was the entire storage space of the van was taken up with the fuel cells. And in 2006, Honda announced that they would bring a purely fuel cell driven family car to the US and Japanese markets sometime in 2008. Another landmark in green automotive design is this, the Toyota Prius. Launched 10 years ago in 1997 in Japan, it's the world's first mass market consumer hybrid. Now it's a petrol electric hybrid. And what that does is it improves the efficiency by something like 30% over that achievable from a car of comparable size. In 2007, the Tesla Roadster was introduced. Now that's a two-seater sports car powered by almost 7,000 lithium-ion batteries. Those are the same batteries as in a laptop computer. Now the technological challenges are immense. The batteries get incredibly hot, and in the Tesla Roadster, they have to be liquid-cooled. But in case you thought electric cars are boring, the Roadster can do not to 60 in four seconds. So it's a tremendous advance, but whether batteries and plugging the car into the mains is the answer, I think that's yet to be shown. This is the BMW Hydrogen 7, which was introduced at the LA Motor Show in 2006. Now, it really is a zero emissions vehicle in the sense that it runs by converting hydrogen and oxygen into water. So as long as you can get the hydrogen into the car in a sustainable way, then this car is truly sustainable. It can also run on petrol because, of course, there are very few hydrogen filling stations around. Sustainable car development has made huge progress over the last few years, but it's true to say that there's some way to go to bring that technology to the market and possibly even replace conventional petrol and diesel engines. But that push to improve the technology is going to make sustainable engineering one of the most exciting fields of research over the coming years.